Today, I want to talk to you about your mindset. What in the world am I talking about? What is a mindset? Okay, give me some of your responses. What's a mindset? Say it again. Your mindset on a bar. Mindset, you mean the focus? Yes. What does focus. mindset mean? Yeah. Focus. Mind focus. Did you say some of that in, in the Tagalog? No, I didn't Sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> okay. Mindset or focus. Any other words you can give me? Goals. Goals. Goals and plan. Okay. The way you do things. The way to do things. Okay, the Joy. Things. The what? The sections of your Setting. mind. Settings. 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 Settings of your mind. Wow, well, you guys are right on. So now. <laughs> so probably I don't have to do what I'm going to do next, but I looked up dictionary. Dictionary definitions of mindset. Okay. Cambridge Dictionary says a person's way of thinking and their opinions, their mentality, their outlook. Another dictionary says that if you refer to someone's mindset, you mean their general attitudes and the way they typically think about things. Okay, and then the Webster's Dictionary says that in American, well guess who's an American, a mindset is a fixed mental attitude. And how do you get to your fixed mental attitude? You get it by experience, education, and prejudice. Okay, an example of a fixed mental attitude. All Americans eat too much cookies, cakes, and pies. Okay, that is a fixed mental attitude. That's what you think. So, I'm going to kind of review that. In reading those three diff definitions of mindset, the general agreement comes out to a person's way of thinking and their opinions. In other words, a person's fixed mental attitude. And this is the part that I want to talk about this morning, a fixed mental attitude. And I think that definitely can refer to a person's focus in life. So let me give you an example. The example is my four or five year old daughter Sarah, when she was that age, she wanted to learn to ride a bicycle. She was very determined to ride the bicycle. 
There's no training wheels on the bicycle. So she came home from school and in the afternoon, where was Sarah? On the street, riding that bicycle. I don't know how many times she fell off or fell over. She never came into the house crying, oh, mommy, I hurt. She never did that. It took two or three afternoons and she could ride like a pro. Now talk about a fixed mental attitude. Okay, I have to tell you, no, that's not Sarah. That was just a perfect picture to show my example. You're confused because that bike doesn't have pedals. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, isn't that kid doing a great job? <laughs> so let's get back to talk about a fixed mental attitude. Nothing could tear Sarah away from her purpose. <laughs> So because of her single-mindedness, she was able to ride that bike within about three afternoons she was Do any of you have a fixed mental attitude? I'll be surprised if you say no. <laughs> okay, now can your fixed mental attitude be good or bad? In Sarah's case, her fixed mental attitude was good. So now I want to decide or discuss does the well I want to equate fixed mental attitude and signal single mindedness to your mindset. Okay, am I making sense so far? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Alright, I've got some big words in this message. Okay, so I want to find out if the Bible says anything about people who have a fixed mental attitude. Negative or positive? Can you think of any examples? If so, tell me. Moses. Moses, okay, can you give me a little bit of... Uh, the first time Moses was God called Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, he said, no, no, I cannot do that. Okay. And then later on, Moses to be a great leader. Okay, he went from a negative fixed mental attitude to a positive one. Good example. Okay, any other examples that you can, any, anybody of you can share with us? Okay, okay. So the 
the Israelites at Jesus' time, their fixed mental attitude was that they wanted to uh, crucify Jesus. Okay, and is that fixed mental attitude negative or positive? What do you think? Come on, give me some answers. For us today, we say yes, they were very negative. For they themselves, this was a positive thing to do. Okay, I want to give you my examples that I thought of. Genesis 6 5 tells us that the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Wow, talk about a negative fixed mental attitude. And because of their negative fixed mental attitude, only evil all the time, oh my goodness, that's horrible. That brought them the flood. What a negative example or a negative mindset that got a whole bunch of people into trouble. A very cataclysmic event happened. The cataclysmic event. This. But verse 8 tells us that Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. This means his family was an extremely small minority among the over 10 million people that died in the flood. Come,我話的一家呢係相比之下，我話的一家呢其實係一個。Which of course, I went to the internet. Sorry, I didn't let you finish. Okay, so, nah, yeah, I didn't know how to say that in English. <laughs> say nothing of Chinese, okay? Uh, I looked on the internet and there was a guy called the Science Guy, Bible Science Guy, not Science Guy, Bible Science Guy, and he explained through about three pages of how he came to this figure from the time at, of Adam and Eve until the flood, and he explained how he came to that figure. So if you want to you can look on the internet, and this man came up with 10 trillion, that number up there, more than 10 trillion people who died in the flood. Okay, now think about it. We already know from this story that the people around Noah made fun of him. So I've got this picture of people are laughing. Ah, you crazy guy building this boat. We don't even know what a boat is for, you know. Um, all of these people. So think about that figure. Over 10 million against 8. Because it was Noah and his wife and three sons and 
his family anyway. So over 10 trillion people against eight. What are those odds? Who's going to win? The 10 trillion or Noah? Who's going to win? Noah? Really? Okay, of course it was Noah. Why? Because God is on Noah's side. You cannot... Noah cannot overcome those odds by himself. He's got God on his side. Okay, my next example might be a little bit easier for talking about odds. Now the Israelites were promised that they could go to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So before they went to the promised land, Moses sent 12 spies into Canaan, that's the promised land, to scout out the land and see what they were up to or what they were up against. The 12 spies came back. 10 of them said, Oh, yes, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a great place to live. But the people are huge. <laughs> we, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. How many of you react to a cockroach by going <laughs> <laughs> How many of you react to the cockroach like oh! <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. So we have the odds and I figured it out. Ten out of twelve, that odds is about eighty-three percent said no, we can't do this. And only two said, yes, we can do this and we need to do it now. So we have this percentage of 83% against 17%. This is roughly speaking. And that means 10 against 2. Let me ask you, who's going to win, the 10 or the 2? The 2! Well, that's kind of silly. 10 against 2, how can that be? Question, how can that be? Why? Same. Same. Same God is with the two. Oh, the same God is with the two as it was with the eight members of Noah's family. Okay, the same. All right. Perhaps what the ten scouts saw was this. <laughs> but what Caleb and Joshua saw, the other two, they saw God. 
咁另外嗰兩個贊同佢嘅咧，就誒，佢、呃、哋見到嘅咧，就唔係一個巨人，係一個神。So again, the smaller number wins over the larger number. 再一次證，誒、呃，就係、是、例子就係少數係可以贏到多數嘅。Because God is on the side of the little guy. 咁原因就係因為神與是嗰批少數人咧，對佢有忠誠嘅咧，就係會與佢哋同在。And actually, the odds were greater than ten against two, because the report of the ten caused all of the, the majority of the people to also start worrying about their future and, and about what's going to happen if we go into the promised land. 咁誒嗰十個人咧，誒都係好擔心嘅喎。咁因為誒佢哋去到嗰個地方又誒見到啲巨人啦，點都係好震驚。It's a very interesting story. If you want to read it when you get home, Numbers 13. And the next one, we're going to do better odds, one on one. That's 50 to 50, right? More even, right? Who do you suppose is going to win, 50% or the 50%? <laughs> yes. Okay, the third example is guess who? David and Goliath. How many of you already know that story? Okay. David is 50%, Goliath is 50%, right? Say one on one. Right, stand up, Nicholas. I want to fight you. <laughs> okay, really, stand up. Come over here. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win, him or me? You. <laughs> Okay, it seems if you just look at this picture, it seems that Goliath will win. David was very young and inexperienced in battle. And the Bible tells us, and this again, this is in um, 1 Samuel chapter 17, it tells us that Goliath was huge. He was over nine feet tall. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to stand in this room. This is 10 feet. This is a 10 foot ceiling. Okay. If this is a 10 foot ceiling, he would be in here like this walking around in this room. He couldn't quite get his head up, I'm sure. So not only was he huge and tall, he was a seasoned warrior. He was a veteran in fighting. He knew what he was doing. So it seems that the odds are in Goliath's favor. He's going to win. But we forgot, or we haven't mentioned yet, God was, God was on David's side. So I changed this picture a little bit. <laughs> this is what Goliath saw. But David never really knew Goliath's strength. Why? Because he was focused on God's strength. So did you hear that? Did you notice that? Where was David's mindset? 
He was focused on God because God was in charge. That's all he could see. So, even though the odds seem insurmountable, God is he is God is with us. God helps us through those huge mountains of things that are not going right. So, um, to Dao Wei, they call that sing, uh, yeah, the game with a so if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 is where we're going to start. Ephesians chapter 4. Now I think that this gives us excellent advice on how to we how to set our minds to overcome our insurmountable odds. Okay, listen carefully and follow along if you have it. Verse 22, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitudes of your minds, and to put off the new put on, self, put on. put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands so that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for, for the day of redemp redemption. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Sunday, 
，神在基督裏面算了，你們一樣。All right, that is a very long list. Did you catch each one of those? Okay, so I want to go back and number the, what he just said in there. The first one he said is in verse 23. Go ahead and read that in verse 23. Be made new in the attitude of your minds. In other words, change your thinking. Change your opinions. Change your mental outlook. And we can see from the examples we've just shared. It is not impossible to change your mind. It can be done. So the first one, change your mind. First on the list, change your mind. The second one, put off falsehood. How do you put off falsehood? You don't lie. You tell the truth. So the opposite of don't lie is tell the truth. <laughs> okay, number three on the list is in verse 26. Do not sin when you are angry. Perhaps another way to say that is, do not let your anger control you. Be very careful what you do when you are angry. I don't know what you get out of this picture, but I see that person is very angry and that dry leaf <coughs> is not crushed. Okay, the fist is there, he's hanging on to something that could very easily crumble, and it does not. Again, this is not impossible. It can be done. Okay, the next example is in verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Seal your lips. The opposite of that is, let me look at the verse 29. The opposite of that is to speak things that are helpful to build others up, not tear them down. And this is talking about anger, well, I've well, okay, sorry, I'm getting off of my notes as you noticed. Okay, the next one, number five in this <coughs> list, is verse 30. <coughs> Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. <coughs> How do we grieve the Holy Spirit of God? <coughs> Because we have a continuing attitude of, please, Lord, I'd rather do it myself. A continual attitude of demanding my own way. Okay. The next one, number five on the list, I think is where we are, is to get rid of all bitterness, get rid of all anger, brawling, slander, and malice. 
get rid of it. And how do we do that? That first gives us the answer. Back to my right notes, okay. How do we get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander? We do the opposite instead, which is in in um, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Now, we've said all of that, all of these examples and everything, and I keep saying it's not impossible. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. Jesus looked at them and he said, with man, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay, with God, all things are possible. And I want to remind you of one more verse, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things. I can do all of this through Him who gives me strength. So this message is for your encouragement this week. You can do all things through God who gives you the strength to overcome huge odds, huge obstacles. Thank you.